Good morning, everyone. Let us now join in the call to worship. Be thou our vision, O God. Be our eyes. Be our hearts. Be the grace that flows through our lives. Let us join in our opening hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Responsive reading today, number 137, response number one. righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I 
might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us now join in our affirmation this morning, number 885. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen.
we've come to that time in our service where we have the prayers for the people. Um, I would like to put forth, um, there are two very special ladies of our church that are having birthdays this week. One's here and one isn't. Uh, Miss Bonnie is having a birthday this week and also Ruth Donald. So happy birthday to you. Um, prayers for uh, Nancy Relier, Tracy Roach, Audrey Wotas, Les Carpenter, Terry Dwyer, Laura Eames, William Givens, Polly, uh, Holly Fallon, Traditi, Darcy Cross, Bob Dick, Dana Wilson, Doug Bailey, Donna Hayes, Penny Stewart, Tracy Collins, Colette Cook, Kay Canning, Ted Collins, Abe Acey, Kay Earl, Nancy Breen, and I also ask that you pray for my parents, uh, Irv and Ruth Donald. Um, Ruth took a spill here a week ago, and Irv had his uh, big toe amputated. So we are uh, trying to get them back on their feet, so to speak. Anybody else you'd like to bring forward? Um, Bud? Prayers for Bud Purton. Uh, my son Dan and his wife Kat are driving cross country as we speak from Helen Mo Helena, Montana to Connecticut. Daniel's been transferred. And yesterday they spent five hours in traffic in Wyoming due to a tractor trailer fire. So I am not sleeping, so we all need prayers. Yes, prayers Thank for you. safe travel for them. Well, I'll bring it up. Christine Dubois, formerly Christine Chmielewski, she fell, joined the rest of them. She broke her arm, slipped on the ice, and uh, she's coming along. Okay, prayers for Christine Dubois. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over these people that we have mentioned. We ask that you will watch over and guide them and heal them and help them to see a better day with your blessings. In your name we pray, amen. Let us now join together in our personal prayers this morning. O oh Lord, you provide for your flock in all times. Recalling your many graces, we lay our needs before you today. We pray this morning for the church that our leaders may witness to the Lord's loving sacrifice. We pray for the leaders of our nation that their decisions may reflect the teachings of Christ. We pray for those undergoing hardships and illness that they may know that the Lord is at their side. Heavenly Father, we know that you will bestow on us everything we need. Listen to the cries of your flock and answer us. We ask this through your Son, the Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen
this time we would ask if you have any announcements in addition to those in the bulletin. Just a reminder that Palm Sunday and Easter are coming fast. Um, on Palm Sunday, we would like to have um, a pie sale. So if you are able to make some pies, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. And on Monday, Thursday, we're going to have a service uh, combined with Christ Church from Cheryl, and we're going to have a covered dish dinner. So if you would like to attend that, um, you can sign up and just let us know what you plan on bringing. Thank you. And just so you know, I've got two daughters visiting this week, and um, one's from Virginia, and one's from Nevada. I'm not sure which one brought the snow, but, <laughs> but they're happy to be here for this week. This time we ask our ushers to come forward that we may receive our offering. shepherd, gentle savior, we give you thanks this day for rest in green pastures, for refreshment beside still waters, for health and wholeness of our souls. As we rejoice in your goodness and mercy, we offer you our gifts this day. Through our, our, our offering, may others be blessed as we have been blessed from your hand. Amen. Please be seated for our second hymn today, number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See.
I think you might agree this morning that some of us can go through this life with blurred vision. Often we don't really see that when we stare at the familiar until it becomes unfamiliar, we will see it for the first time. The more attentive we are to others, the more we will reach out to them. When we take the time, we might even see deeper into another person's soul. What a privilege it is for me to enter the library of another's soul in spiritual direction. We need to see and smell the flowers to appreciate the beauty around us. We more readily recognize the beauty of the body rather than the soul. Forty-nine billion, we are told, is spent on cosmetics every year. No wonder we are blind like Jesus pointed out. They may look, but not see. We might not be blind like the man in the gospel, but most of us have a blind spot that we find hard to admit, just like the scribes and the Pharisees who could not admit their blindness. A good example of encountering our blindness can happen while you're traveling on the freeway and you want to pass a car ahead of you. So you look in your rearview mirror and in your side mirror, everything looks clear, Suddenly, as you're about to pull out, you hear a horn indicating that there was someone right alongside of you, but you didn't see them. That is the blind spot. As we go through life, we have to find that spot or area or allow someone else to make us aware of it. Our blind spot might be jealousy. It might be envy. It might be being overcritical of others or judgmental some addiction like overeating, smoking too much, just to mention a few. Ronald Rauheiser believes that we should not let the mosquito bites of life blind us to the much larger presence of grace. Some people are told that they need help, but they don't see the need for it. Maybe the hardest words ever to say are, I need help. A spouse might need counseling but refuses it. A person who drinks too much will deny that he or she is an alcoholic. They don't see the damage they're doing to themselves or to their children. And like the blind man, they are in need of the healing power of Christ to touch their lives to remove those blind spots. As people grow older and their eyesight begins to dim, they often need a cataract operation. What a difference that can make for them. Before the operation, their eyesight was blurred. After it, they see a whole lot better. That is what happens to us when the healing power of Christ touches us. Saul was blinded, as you remember, on his way to Damascus. Once the scales fell off from his eyes, he saw what the Lord had in mind for him. The great persecutor inverted his life and became the greatest convert worker the church had ever seen. Another woman, Ann Dillard, was born blind, but a brilliant surgeon was able to help her see again. When the bandages remo were removed from her eyes, she immediately closed them. Everything she admitted was too marvelous and beautiful to behold. She cried, Oh God, how beautiful! Maybe through the absence of our gifts, we might appreciate them a little bit more. God exclaimed every time something was created, it is good. We are the ones who spoil it. Seeing beauty is a way to ascend to God. Meth Child Magberg, a 13th century mystic, considered the day of her spiritual awakening when she saw all things in God and God in all things. Thomas Merton wrote about how he was blind in his early life until he found himself in Corpus Christi Church in New York. He called his girlfriend that he would not meet her as usual because a voice was really telling him, go to Mass, which changed his life because of what he saw and experienced. Everything he saw after that was transformed, even sitting afterwards in a dirty restaurant at 111th Street in New York. 
he felt like he was sitting in the Elysian fields. There's an old story about two horses who look very much alike until you get close to them. One of them is blind, but the owner has decided not to put him down. He prefers to make a good home for him, so he has attached a bell to the halter of the horse that can see. This enables the blind horse to know where the other horse is. If you watch closely, the horse with the bell is always checking to see where the other one is. When they return to the barn at night, the belled horse stops to make sure that the blind horse is behind him. At times we might be the blind horse and need to be guided out of our lethargy by some ringing bell. Or we might be the one helping and guiding someone else. Which one are you? Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, number 128.
now let us pray together the benediction. And now may you go forth in the light of God. May you go forth in the warmth of Christ's love. May you go forth in the flame of God's spirit and live as children of the Most High. Amen.